Hey guys, so next book that I'm going to review is Eleanor and Park, also by Rainbow Rowell. So first things first, this is not the cover that I thought I wanted, because there's two covers, there's this one and then there's a plain one that's just got the back of both of their heads sharing uh, headphone strings. I still like this one and I, I don't think I'm going to buy the second copy, like another copy of the same book. That said, if I win the lottery and have loads of leftover money, it wouldn't be a horrendous thing to have to. I love this book. I love it, I love it, I love it. The only thing that I think I'd say about the front cover that I was a little bit annoyed with is Eleanor on the front cover. This is Eleanor. Or this is Eleanor if her entire personality were different because she's a size 6 which annoyed me a bit this book is about the fact that she's not thin and she's very thin but that isn't really an issue with the book that's just an issue with the illustrator and yeah it's not the worst cover in the world so I love, love this book it's fabulous it's set in the 80s which isn't my all time favourite kind of time setting. I prefer things to be kind of like now or a really long time ago. But that said, this was amazing. The premise is about a girl called Eleanor who is fat and poor and has the worst clothes and no possessions. Well, next to no possessions. She lives in one bedroom with four other kids. She's just come back from kind of living with some neighbours for a year because her mum's boyfriend, husband, person, kicked her out of their last house for literally no reason. And her kind of coming to this new school and Park, who is part American, part Korean and lovely. Like, he's just lovely. He's got a decent home, he's got a younger brother who who kind of inherited the more American look from his parents, whereas Park looks Korean, and being the 80s, that's kind of a thing, him not being white. I mean, I know it's still a thing now, but it was definitely more of a thing 30 years ago. His life is okay, but his mum is a bit odd, and his dad is not he's not the most liberal dad in the world he's an army dad and he is very in the mindset of men are men and they don't wear makeup and they don't have feelings they just get on with stuff and they can do things and park really isn't that kind of guy he likes to talk about stuff and he him and his dad clash in quite a lot of ways because of that so the non-spoilery review of this book, Eleanor is lovely, she's adorable, and I really, really connected with her for almost all of this book. I didn't at the end, but that's not about writing, that's just about my personal experience and I couldn't connect to that. But she is lovely, she's, I think Rainbow Rowell really captured the idea of being young and being overweight and being in love. Which sounds like a really kind of, oh, there's no difference in it, but there is. There's a shit ton of difference. Like, it's it's exaggerated for Eleanor because not only is she overweight, but she wears clothes from Goodwill that don't match because that's, like, they can't afford new clothes. So her and her mum have to buy things from Goodwill. And they're all the wrong sizes, and they've got holes in them, and they're just... It, it makes her stick out even more and she's the new girl and she's got massive curly red hair like even if you're thin and have massive curly red hair it's gonna be difficult not to be picked up I think it's captured really well the kind of the constant paranoia of are people staring at me maybe I should just keep my head down and not enjoy my life because then I'll go away kind of thing and I really liked that I really liked that it was told in dual perspective, but that it wasn't this chapter is Eleanor, this chapter is Park, because I think a lot of the time 
having a full chapter dedicated to one person means that you miss out on the same scene being seen from both sides and I think that's a shame because there's definitely there's a, there is an upside to having that happen which is that you get to kind of you feel twice the emotion that's in that scene so there's a scene in this where they've just seen each other after a weekend or something and it's really small paragraphs and it goes Eleanor Park, Eleanor Park, Eleanor Park and you, you get to feel all of the kind of nervousness and relief and a little bit of lust that's in those sentences kind of twofold because you're reading both parts. Yeah, so that's the end of my non-spoilery review. Uh, if you haven't read this book, you should definitely go and read it right now. Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rat. Go and read it. Go, 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 go. Okay, so spoiled review. <laughs> Let's start from the end and work our way forward because the end is... Okay, so the end of this book, she writes him a postcard. Like, I'm, I'm starting from the very, very end, like, last chapter. She writes him a postcard, and we don't know what's on the postcard. We just know that it's three letters long, and that he smiles and feels better when he reads it. So, I want to say it says, I love you, or I miss you, or come and see me, or come see me, or, like, pick me up or visit me now or something something like that or like even how was prom like he's been to his prom the night before and I just I need there to be a sequel to this book I don't know. like I need it I physically need to know that they see each other again which which is a possibility like Rainbow Rowell has said that she's interested in writing a second book about them but not an immediate sequel it wouldn't take place right after this book it would take place when they're 30 um, which would put it kind of like 2011 because this is in 1986 I have nothing against the idea of reading a book about them as grown-ups but I need to know what the postcard said I need I, I need to know and I need to know that they're happy in, in love and live together because they're adorable going back a little bit further oh my god her stepdad like that that is not okay that it's so not okay that's the other reason that I want a sequel I want to know that her little sister is okay because her stepdad is the most disgusting human being you don't write those things on your stepdaughter's books you just don't <laughs> like no human being should ever say those words ever they're disgusting like I could tell from kind of halfway through the book that the person writing the notes was her stepdad. I was expecting it, but I, th I still think it was done really well. Their relationship was just, just beautiful. Like, they fall in love reading superhero comics and listening to music, and that's just adorable. Tina's a bitch, and I'm kind of glad that Park got into a fight. I am really intrigued by the eyeliner thing, like Park wearing eyeliner. Like as soon as they talked about it, I was like, that's hot. It's a fictional character, but it's a guy wearing eyeliner that's just that is attractive. So much of this book I liked the fact that the Park really loved her. Because I think often when when you have books that are just written from one point of view, or even when they're written from two points of view and you see the guy falling for the girl a lot of what it's about is oh my god she's so hot like I would totally have sex with her she's so attractive kind of thing Eleanor is not beautiful she is fat and she is kind of average looks and there's a point somewhere in the book I can't find it right now um but she's just been given a makeover by Park's mum and she is quite upset about it because she doesn't like wearing makeup and she doesn't want to feel she has a real issue about herself and her body and her self-image and there's a line that he says where he, she's said oh I don't look nice and he says Eleanor's right she doesn't look nice she's art art isn't supposed to look nice it's supposed to make you feel something and I think that's such a beautiful way of explaining that kind of a relationship and that kind of feeling that it's not about whether she looks nice it's about the fact that 
when he looks at her, he all he can see is her, that he gets butterflies and that he's still, he's as nervous as she is, if not more, despite the fact that he doesn't have this kind of looming self-doubt going on. Also, considering that this is set in, 19, in 1986, I just, I really like how some, how progressive some of the characters are, like, there's a scene where Eleanor and Parker are in the backseat of a car and they're talking and he tells her that he loves her, and she says, I know, and they get into a conversation about Star Wars because of the, kind of, um, Han Solo, Princess Leia thing, and he tells her that she doesn't need to be Han Solo, and she says, I'm totally Han Solo in this relationship. And he's like, well, I'm not Princess Leia. And her response is, don't get so hung up on gender roles. And just, like, women positive jokes, I really like. They're so undervalued and they're so underused that when they are used in books, I think it's really beautiful. I think this might get a 10 out of 10 me, because it's perfect. The other thing about this book that I just... Well, it's not about the book, but... After I finished this book, I kind of went. I went online and I was like, "There needs to be a sequel. I need. I, I need a sequel." And instead, what I found was that there's a movie, <laughs> or there's going to be a movie. And more than just there being an amazing movie, Ray Burrell is going to do the screenplay for it. So, for those of you who don't know, the screenplay is kind of like the the script and the stage directions, where the scene takes place. It's like rewriting the whole book, but to be a film. So it means that the person who wrote the book gets to decide how the movie goes. And I think that's really interesting because a lot of the time, things that I find issue with in movies are the screenwriting. It's not the casting and it's not the acting. It's the fact that the person who's written the screenplay doesn't understand the significance of a scene or of a line or of a, of a story arc. So that's going to be amazing. <laughs> and I am keeping tabs on that as a thing, like, I, I want to know when it's going to come out, I want to know everything about this movie. So yeah, 10 out of 10 for this book. So I hope you liked this review and I'll see you next time. If you want to have a chat about Eleanor and Park, leave a comment in the comments box or come to me through uh, Tumblr or Facebook or Twitter. And I'll see you next time. Bye.